Yes, so we thank for the God and we're so honored that you're standing to your feet. And while you're yet standing to your feet, I just want to uh, pray and talk to God. I'm, I'm just so delighted. Uh, I'm glad to see my my, my, my woman, my, my lady, and my wife back on her feet looking good. She walked in the office this morning. I said, there she is. Yeah, yeah, I don't like to see her down, man. She's back on her feet. I, I, I preach better when she's in the building. Hallelujah to God. You know, when you get married, you call, you call your wife your second Holy Ghost. Amen. And so uh, I just thank God for her. And listen, for everybody who is uh, feeling better, thank God for you. Those who are on the mend, uh, we're praying for you. Uh, for we are in a season of, uh, of uh, people uh, are going through physically in their bodies. But we know that God is a healer. Isn't he? Yeah, he is. And uh, thank you for some of y'all doing your due diligence and joining masks, and I appreciate you for that. But do know that we here at Power Nation do our due diligence as well. We have uh, 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 disinfected our sanctuary. As a matter of fact, our entire building on yesterday uh, with uh, equipment that we purchased uh, back in the height of the pandemic. And so uh, we want to make sure that we, we do have you in mind and, uh, and, and make sure that you have a safe, clean environment to worship God in. Amen. And so anyway, let's pray and talk to God. Father, we thank you. We honor you this morning for your presence, Lord, because without your presence, we would not have one. And because of you, we live and we move and we have our very being. And God, I stand in great expectation because you're about to do something today, God, that's going to blow our mind. Hallelujah to God. I want you to prepare, God, somebody's heart right now, whether they're streaming virtually or they're in the building, God, make us one, God. Let us stand, God, in a seat of expectation as we offer up our mind and heart to you to receive bread from heaven. Feed us, God, until we absolutely want no more. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to be delivered today. Somebody is going to be set free. And I believe by faith that somebody is going to commit their life to you because of hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Father, we do understand that the word of God is more than literature. The word of God is life. It is help and healing to our bodies. And God, we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I ask you personally to give me the mind of the wise and the tongue of the learned. When you say stop, I'll quit. When you say, yo, I'll slow down. And everything is for your glory. In Jesus' name, every excited person in this building say amen. Listen, I want you to hold up the word of God. And let's confess over the word of God and say, I believe absolutely everything that this book says about my life, my family, my future, my finances, my feelings, and my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. If I can just get like a hairpin turn of monitor up, I appreciate it. I believe we can go to church from there. Um, Exodus chapter 14 and uh, I want to go to verses 15 through 22 in the Amplified Version. I, I got to uh, say that uh, I give, give a shout out to Minister Pope. He did an excellent job last Wednesday night. Amen. And, and corralling us to, uh, to uh, the fulfillment of vision. Amen. And I, I want to appreciate that. And, and I'm looking forward. It's, it has been very challenging for me to uh, hold off the, the New Year's Eve message, the vision uh, theme, and all of this stuff. I, that's why sometimes I stumble over my words to try to hold back what I need to say. It's the one of the hardest things I, I've had to do. And so, But anyway, the Lord has been faithful, and, and we're going to share what God has given us to share today, and I believe that he's going to meet us where we are. Amen. And to be more accurate, we're going to meet him where he is. So anyway, uh, I want to go to Exodus chapter 14, verses 15 through 22 in the Amplified. And the word of God reads, the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. 
And the Israelites shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall go into the sea after them. And I will gain honor over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and horsemen. The Egyptians shall know and realize that I am the Lord when I have gained honor and glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the angel of God who went before the host of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before them and stood behind them. Coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. It was a cloud and darkness to the Egyptians, but it gave light by night to the Israelites. And the one host did not come near the other all night. God could bring darkness to one side while using the same thing to bring light to the other. Verse 21 says, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the Israelites went into the midst of the sea on dry ground. The waters being a wall to them on their right hand And on their left. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Before I get into my monologue, I can uh, give you a brief preface by setting this, this text up. And we see that God is true to his word that he has delivered the Israelites out of Egyptian, Egyptian captivity after a 400 year stint in slavery. And uh, they're on their way out and they have uh, cattle, they have goats, they have sheep, they have gold, they have silver. They, They are loaded when they come out. God made sure that they had significant reparations on their exodus from captivity. They did not leave empty-handed. But even though they did not leave empty-handed, they failed to see that they were still in transition, though out of the hands of Egyptian captors. You have to understand that when you're going from one place to another, even though it seems to happen immediately, there's still a point or a period of transition. Amen. And so they get there and then all of a sudden they are find that the Red Sea is in front of them and they see that the Egyptian army did not leave them alone, but they pursued them while they were on their journey to freedom. And in their pursuit, they're on horses and they're on chariots and and they're foot soldiers and they're trained battlemen and they're after the Israelite people and they were frightened and afraid so much so that when you read this they said Moses we told you to leave us alone we were happy to be slaves in Egypt Were you not satisfied? Were there not enough graves in Egypt that you would also bring us out here to die? Because they did not see any way forward. The Egyptians behind the Red Sea in front and according to their own perception or purview, this was the end of their short-lived triumphant journey. But recently, I, I just witnessed that the World Track and Field Championships uh, had taken place probably about a couple of months ago. 
Um, they were hell. They were great games. And these world-class athletes, and they are world-class athletes. I've had a chance to look at some of the training videos and footage that they go through in order to compete at such a high level from individuals all across our great globe. But these world-class athletes, they train intensely to prepare for such a large event. The weight training, the resistance training, they run sprints, they adhere to a diet that assists in recovery and muscle development, and the list goes on and on and on. Hydrotherapy, cryotherapy, I mean, I mean heat therapy, it just goes on and on and on to compete at such a high level. But I had the opportunity to catch a couple of these televised races, and one of them was insanely close, and this was the men's 100 meter race. It was it was insanely close, but 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 Noah Lyles of the United States of America was able to come out with the gold and the victory. Though he trained, he worked out, he adhered to a very strict diet. The race that I aforementioned came down to the wire. As I watched this close finish, <laughs> I discovered that Noah Lyles became the world champion, not because he ran away from the pack. It's because he outleaned the others at the finish. He out leaned them at the finish. It wasn't his, it was his high speed. It was his high speed along with his stretch that brought him the world championship victory. Now I use this analogy for track and field because I would like to highlight that today's instant access culture, say that with me, say instant access culture. Let's say it again, instant access culture. Because of this culture that we live in right now at present has often determined success solely by the speed and omitting the fact that the race of success also requires a stretch. It's the small things that can make the greatest impact. You know, uh, everybody's looking to do some quick video to get a million views overnight. The speed of success. Everybody's buying lottery tickets, so today you go from 40 hours a week to tomorrow you go to lavish living. It's, it's the speed of success. And, 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 and now, you know, the, you know, the gyms are suffering for memberships because, you know, there's, they have forsaken the treadmills for peels and knives because to do it naturally takes too long. That's not in every case, but in a lot of cases, people rather, you know, substitute time for results. But it's the small things that makes the greatest impact. Uh, get comfortable. We're going to be here just for a minute. It's often said that it does not matter how you start, but it's how you finish. I want to submit to some of you on this wonderful cloudy day while the rain so humbly gently touches the structures that we reside in. I want to submit to you that you are much closer than you think. Can you help me preach to your neighbor this morning? Say neighbor. You are much closer than you think. Mm. 
And that success that seems to be so elusive sometimes, it is not out of your reach. Yeah. Let that sit in. Yeah. You're trying to rush me, but I'm driving a full cylinder right now, and I'll be okay. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11 says, The race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but the one who endures until the end. In other words, victory is given to the one who knows how to, and this is my subject, stretch. <sighs> I plan to. It's given to the one who knows how to stretch there's an old story that I've, I we used to read way back in elementary school don't know if they read it now I don't know uh, Mrs. Jones or Miss Simmons if y'all still frequent stories uh, of this such but it was called the tortoise and the hare and 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 you know on the surface looking at that story it, the tortoise by nature had an extremely unfair advantage. And the have by nature is more swifter and agile and faster than the tortoise itself. And so you will look at that race and say, man, I'm putting all my money on the have. But that story is very interesting because it's a story of consistency. And endurance. When the rabbit takes off, it just leaves the tortoise. If I can remember the story correctly, because the hare had such an advantage, it was arrogant. And it would stop over here to rest, over here to eat, and fall asleep here. And the whole while, while it's asleep, that tortoise is still taking consistent steps toward the finish line. Hmm. And when the when the tortoise was about to just cross the finish line, the rat, the hare woke up. And said, oh my God! But by then, it was too late. The race wasn't given to the swift. It wasn't given to the strong, but it was given to the one that was taking sure, consistent, accountable steps Lord Jesus and today in ministry now we have robbed us of taking sure steps because we want it swiftly mm. but when I look at this text I just want to just 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 help us here can we talk for a minute to stretch is to be made or have the capability of being made greater without tearing or breaking is to be made or have the capability of being made greater without tearing or breaking. Don't give me greatness that will cause me to break. Lord have mercy. Uh, I, I, was, I, was, I was talking to... Uh, Deacon Tracy in the office a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, and um, and I noticed that we've, in the last several weeks, that our social media presence has improved quite significantly as we've changed some things on social media and which our reach has has, has gone far beyond what we normally would do, and so we've, we've uh, been in the face of some people that we normally wouldn't be in the face of, some that like us and some that don't like us. 
for whatever reason, it does not matter to me. I don't know them and they don't know me, so I don't lose any sleep over what they say. And I begin to share with Deacon Tracy how some people just say negative things just because. And 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 Tracy, he just looked at me he like in his mouth drop. I said, absolutely. I said, they just start a fight on your timeline because they don't have any type of influence of their own. And so the minute I try to say something back to them, I give them all of my followers' attention just to say something to them. And so what I mean by that is, is that, you know, you, you don't, if you're not ready for the critique that comes along with the success, you might want to stay where you are. If you're one of the ones that always have to clap back and always have to correct and always have to say something, then maybe a great spotlight is not for you because somebody, I don't care what kind of accomplishments that you do, somebody will always have something to say about you. Don't give me greatness that will cause me to break. Now I understand why some athletes don't look at social media when, when the season is going on because just some things that they just don't need to hear, they don't need to see because that stuff affects how you, how you respond and how, and how you operate because faith comes by hearing, you know what I mean? And there are some things you just don't need to hear, don't need to engage in. And so don't give me greatness that will cause me to break. But stretching is embraced to enhance one's capacity to reach. You know, when you stretch, it enhances your capacity to reach. When you stretch, it enhances your capacity to reach. And now, there are a few physical benefits of stretching as well. Uh, that well, Number one, it improves your joint range of motion. When you stretch, you know, uh, in school, you let it always start. Before you get into PE, you got to stretch. You know, you got, got to stretch. Before you work out, you got to stretch. And, you know, stretching seems to me the most boring part of the activity. And so most people, they either skip it or they don't take it serious. And some see it as a waste of time. <laughs> Amen. They skip it, don't take it serious, or some just see it as a waste of time because I'm ready to play. Ready to work out. Ain't got time to stretch. Want to hurry up and get this over with. So improves joint range of motion. Number two, it increases the output power of your muscles due to increased range of motion. They say when you finish, when you finish working out that you should stretch after you work out. And so now the next time you go back in to work out, now you've given your muscles room to grow. Because of the stretch. Stretching creates more movement. Yeah. <laughs> Let me say it again. Stretching creates more movement or more motion. Three, it relieves stress in the joints. And then number four, it, it improves the muscle tendon pliability. So, so the place where you weren't as pliable before, now it makes you that much more liable you're, you're able to handle some things you can you can sway a bit further now without injury or breaking something amen now while doing research on stretching I notice that the benefits largely emphasize the joints the benefits largely emphasize the joints Joints, eh, when I think about the joints, it, joints are a place of connectivity as well as transition from one point to another. Joints are a place of connectivity, a transition from one place to another. Now, see, I am from this area, but I'm by way of Grimes and through Simpson, and, and I grew up in Grimes, and my, my, my father's side of people is from the Grimes and area, and back in the day, uh, once you got on Grimes and Bridge Road and you crossed the railroad tracks, as soon as you crossed the railroad tracks, there was a small green cinder block building to your left, little dilapidated, ah, uh, little uh, building 
something to the right of it that was uh, unoccupied at the time. But back in the day, they used to fry chicken in there and play music in there. Uh, but we called that place the joint. Uh, and when you went to the joint, that was a place where you made connections with friends and families and those who were just traveling through town that just socially wanted to have a good time. And so they would meet up at the joint. Mm. Because the joint was a place of transition and connectivity from one place to the other. Now, my age group, what we would do is, is we would start off at the joint, but the joint would not be the final destination. We would start off at the joint and then make our way to Peppers, you know, or, 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 the, or, or the Texas two-step. Or, or back in the day, it was called the Unlimited Touch, or then it became the Max. I, I don't know, y'all, like, or oh, Mr. The seas lounge. You you had to be from Greenville to know these places, and some of y'all looking at me and smiling, and y'all don't want to smile as if you've never been to those places before. Or oh, when they weren't jumping, there were parties over at the National Guard Armory, and Kiss 102 would show up out there, glory to God, and then we would leave the National Guard Armory and hook up at the Waffle House on Greenville Boulevard. And then when the National Guard Army wasn't jumping, glory to God, you find an old hole in the wall out there in the middle of the woods glory to God and, there, and be a club out there oh, I'm trying to tell you all these places were places of connection and transition aka they were called the joint hmm. everybody say the joint show of hands anybody ever been to one uh, y'all like y'all scared y'all don't been to <laughs> I tell you saints are funny boy you know, praise the Lord. Yes. You ever been to John? Uh, but the text reveals, text reveals that the children of Israel, though freed, watch this, they're freed from Egyptian slavery, found themselves at the Red Sea. Free from slavery. It should be smooth sailing from here. I'm, 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 I'm out of my Egyptian oppressors and only God has brought me out of Egypt and led me to a place that I cannot go any further on my own. So it would seem like God, I was doing better off in the world before I got saved. Now that I'm saved, it seems like I got more problems. It seems like I got more enemies. It seems like I have more restrictions. It seems like I have boundaries that are closing me in. But when I was in the world, I could do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. Didn't feel guilty about when I did it, who I did it with, or where I did it. I could have shown it on social media and not been convicted, not been judged, but since I've given my life to you, it's like I gotta hide myself sometimes because I don't want these things that come along with all this freedom that you've assigned to me. That's what it seemed like sometimes. I had more fun when I was in the world. I had more fun when I was a slave to the rhythm. Grace Jones, y'all got to remember that. You know, just, uh, boy, I'm trying to tell you. I love my age because, you know, I'm connected to my dad's generation and also my generation. And so it's, it's amazing that I get to, I get to re reference some of these things for real and not just have hearsay. I love it. So the Egyptians found themselves without slaves and they say you know what they ain't gonna punk us like this <laughs> the bible said god hardened their hearts <laughs> because truth be told if god had intervened they wouldn't have pursued them now this ain't in my notes this is free god made them pursue israel Wait a minute. God, why did, why did you provoke my enemy to come after me? God provoked Egypt to pursue Israel. <laughs> Wait a minute. Because God knows if you get to a Red Sea 
without any impetus to go across it, you will think that where you are is where he promised. And so we have to have some motivation to trust God when we just got free. Uh, we have to have some motive because this newfound freedom, it feels good. It's, it's great, but it's not what God promised. So they found themselves in front of the Red Sea and the Egyptian army closing behind them with no intent but to slay every one of them. They came to a place of transition where they would never see the Egyptian army again. They arrived at the joint. The place of transition. They came to the joint. <laughs> who I want to talk to somebody who may be at the joint of your life. That you're in a place where you can't go back and it seems like you can't go forward. You are just at this place called the joint I have nothing to go back to if I do it's gonna kill me and I've been promised that which is in front of me but I don't see a way and so I'm stuck at this place called the joint as a matter of fact it's so frustrating to be at the joint God would you have just let me alone where I was because I was fine doing what I was doing but you gave me this hope and you gave me this faith and you gave me this word that you was going to give me something better only to put me here at this frustrating place I like to call the joint Woo. The greatest pain in our bodies seems to happen at the joint. <laughs> Nothing like that knee pain. Whew. Oh God, because it's at the joint. Huh. Oh, that old hip pain. Oh, sure, that mercy, because... It's at the joint. <laughs> oh, that back pain. Oh, my God, because it's at the joint. Oh, my neck, God, I, I slip on it wrong. I can't even turn it. It's at the joint. Ooh, I, oh, my arm bent backwards. And, oh, it's at the joint. It's, it's painful. When you are experiencing pain at the joint. Because when it happens at the joint, you don't want to move. And if the enemy wants to get you anyway, he don't want to get you in front of people. He don't want to get you behind people. But he wants to attack you at the joint. Because he knows that if I can get you at the place where you don't move. You will never see what God has promised. Yeah, Lord have mercy. But you got to be careful when you arrive at life's joint. Got to be careful. Anybody feel like you've been at life's joint? Anybody feel like you're there now? Anybody online? Throw your hand. I, I'm, after, I'm after the people at the joint today. I'm not, I'm not after the ones who's smoking a joint. I'm, I'm at the one who's at the joint. Because when you have pain at the joint, it'll make you reach for a joint. Mm. So you can medicate, medicate and, and mitigate the pain and so you go into some type of euphoria. Yeah, because I don't want to deal with the pain. As long as I don't move. I don't have to feel the pain. Y'all, Lord, y'all catch that. As long as I don't move, I don't have to feel the pain. As long as I don't decide to get better, I don't have to feel the pain.
pain. As long as you leave me out of therapy, I'll be just fine. I don't want any physical therapy. I don't want any cryotherapy. I don't want any hydrotherapy. Just don't let me move and I'll be okay. Lack of movement doesn't mean that the pain is not there. Just because you come to church doesn't mean that the problem is gone. Hallelujah. Just because you forsake volunteering doesn't mean that the issue has abandoned. Because the minute you decide to move, you'll realize I got to do something about this joint. But you got to be careful when you get to life's joint because if you handle it incorrectly or you misinterpret it, it could lead to devastating injury. Lord have mercy. I've seen devastating injuries that happens at connecting places and MCL injuries and ACL injuries, you know, and, and Achilles injuries. These places are connecting points and, and they're painful and they, most of them require surgery and, 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 and watch this, not, not, just, not just recovery but also rehabilitation because once you get injured at the joint you lose a sense of mobility yeah. I, I, I remember uh, a, a few years ago uh, uh, we, we played basketball at the, we rented a basketball facility out the church one Sunday and uh, you know I, I, I'm, not, I'm not 21 anymore and so I just went out there and I didn't do anything crazy and I'm playing with my son and, and I just went up for just routine old jump shot and I just and I did not stretch I just walked out there and just started shooting around and said we're going to play a little game and I, and I just did a little jump shot and came down and, and a fire shot from the bottom of my foot all the way up to the top of my back. I said, what was that? Well, because I didn't stretch, immediately I felt pain. I, I lost mobility. And I had to put pressure on one side more than the other just to move. Now my body has lost balance because of injury. Because I didn't stretch. I'm, I'm compensating for one thing while the other thing is injured. Y'all not hearing me. Uh, why are you a workaholic? Why do you stay at work 12 hours a day and don't want to go home and spend time with the family? Why is it that you always want to hang out with the fellas and not come home and spend time with the wife? Could it be that you're compensating for something that was injured but you just don't want to have to experience the pain? And so we see potential injury here in verse 12 when the Israelites told Moses to leave them in Egypt and let them serve the Egyptians. Moses, we told you to leave us alone. Man, ain't, ain't that something when you try to help somebody and try to let them see that their life can be better and then it backfire on you and say, I ain't want that no how. Uh, why are you trying to help me? Let me stay where I am. I say it like this. You can't pray a life on somebody that they're not ready to live themselves. And they get mad at Moses. My, what, they smile in one moment, but they flip like a quarter the next. We told you to leave us alone. We was fine being slaves. We had something to eat. We had somewhere to stay. But you brought us out here to kill us. And that's something folk will flip on you. Places of transition can invoke fear which could injure the opportunity of where you are headed. When you're at a place where it seems like you can't move backward or forward, it can invoke fear. And when you're scared, you say anything. <laughs> when you're scared, you'll say anything. And, and so that's why God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a disciplined mind. Amen. 
And so they're standing there. But watch this. When you're afraid and it seems like you cannot move forward or backwards and before you injure the situation any further, the best thing for you to do when you have not stretched is to stand still. Mm. That's the best thing for you to do to prevent injury because you have not stretched. Tell somebody, I said, just stand still. Watch this, verse 13. Uh, Moses said, listen, listen, watch this. Don't worry about nothing. He said, you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now watch this. God did not talk to the Israelites. God talked to Moses. He said to Moses, Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell these people to go forward and cross this Red Sea. Tell the people to go forward and cross this Red Sea. Watch this. Though God sent 10 plagues into Egypt, they would end up at the place of transition. They would end up at the place of connectivity. They would end up at the joint. They would be in a place that's painful. Ooh, glory to God. The joint is also what I call the next place of great movement. The next place of great movement. I need to talk to somebody who, who senses that there is a great movement in your life. If I'm talking to you, I just need you to make a little bit of noise right there. If you believe that you're in a place of great movement. Now watch this. If you believe that you're in a place of great movement, I, 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 by the sound of what you ju I just heard, I, I don't know how much I do believe that you're in a place of great movement. I just think you just clap because I said it. But let me talk to somebody online, maybe in here, one or two people in here that truly believe that I'm in a place that I'm about to make a great move. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what I've been through. I don't care what I've experienced but I believe that my life at this very moment this very place in time the station where I stand the lot that I hold God's about to bust a great move in my life and I'm not going to let the devil do anything to discourage me I'm not going to let people do anything to sway me but I trust God and watch this I may not see it today I may not see it tomorrow but God knows God's about to make a great move in my life Will you find somebody else that believe like you believe and say a great move is on the way? Look at somebody that say a great move is on the way. Now listen, I, I can't leave you there because that's what we say and we high five each other and we walk out of here and live life the same way. We go to work the same way. We drive the same way. We go home and lay the same way and watch the same shows and have the same conversation and text the same people and have the same dinner and you'll come back next Sunday and I can say, won't be a great move and you'll say it's going to be a great move but absolutely don't do anything. I come to tell somebody in here, it's going to take more than just coming to church for a great move. It's going to take more than just Wednesday night Bible study for a great move. It's going to take more than just your scripture on your phone for a great move. Tell somebody, say, it's going to take more than that. Ah, I know you've been in church for a long time. It seems like you've been training. You know how to praise him. You know how to shout. You know how to clap your hands. You know how to stomp your feet. You know the famous songs. You know how to sing along with the praise team. You sung in the choir. All you teach the little children. Oh, you parked the cars. Oh, you've been a usher. You've been on a trustee board. You've been on the deacon board. You've been on the mother board. You've been on all the boards in the church. And it seemed like you know the church in and out, but it's going to take more than that. Tell somebody, I said, it's going to take more than that. Oh, you graduated from high school. Now you went to college. Now you got a master's and you got an MD and a PhD or a THD. It does not matter. It's going to take more than that. I 
God has done some wonderful things. He's brought you out of one place uh, only to bring you to another. And you got there and you feel like, God, have you forgotten about me? God, have you abandoned me? God, did you forget what you said? Uh, God, it doesn't look like uh, there's more in my future. But I come to tell somebody, stand still uh, and see the salvation of the Lord. And so here we find God. I feel my preaching. Here we find God not talking to the people of Israel because God don't talk to people who complain. I need to talk to somebody else in here. God don't talk to people who complain. And so as long as you complain, you won't hear God. But I need to talk to some ex-complainers in here that know how to shut your mouth. And if God didn't do it today, he's going to do it tomorrow. Do I got anybody that believe that and said, God, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. High five your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, God will do it. You just got to hush your mouth. Lord, have mercy. Hold your tongue. The Bible says, and the Lord will fight your battle. Is there anybody in here know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh with us. But here we go. God is talking to Moses and Moses listening to God. He said, tell the people, stand still because I'm about to do a work. I'm about to make a great move. But Moses, you got to do something first. You got to your rod in one hand. I want you to lift up the rod in one hand. But in the other hand, I want you just to stretch this hand. Don't stretch it to the people because they can't help you. Don't stretch it to the right because they can't help you. I need you to stretch in the place that you need to make a way. God says, if you want to see me do something, I need you to stretch. I need you to wake up at 2 o'clock and start calling on my name. I need you to come besides a Sunday and give me praise. I need you to open your mouth and thank me, not just for the big stuff, but also the little stuff. Is there anybody in here? Is there anybody online that knows how to thank God for the little stuff? Come on, everybody. Let's have church. I thank God for clothes on my back. I thank God for food on my table. I thank God for a bed to lie down in. Thank God for a roof over my head. Thank God for something to drive. I know you think that's not big, but God says if you want greatness, thank me for the little things because he who's been faithful over the small things, God says, I'll make you ruler over much. Find somebody in here and say, I'm getting ready to stretch. Excuse me. I need to make some room because I'm getting ready for my breakthrough. I'm getting ready for my promise. I'm getting ready for my great move. I'm getting ready for what God wants to do. I just need about six people to give God some praise in here. If you're ready to stretch, open your mouth and give the Lord a shout. next level will not come with speed. Oh, Shandai. And so some of y'all looking out here, by the time I get home, uh, everything gonna be all right. I'm not saying God can't do it. But this next great move, it ain't gonna be overnight success. It's not gonna be an overnight wonder. <laughs> Tell you, a neighbor, you're going to have to endure some things. Oh my God, I just lost a few people. Uh, you're going to have to endure some things. Uh, you're going to have to learn how to hold your breath. Good God Almighty. How, for more than just 10 seconds. Uh, you're going to have to learn how to write more than 140 characters. Uh, if you want this great move. Because uh, God said, so I ain't 
ain't doing no small stuff. I ain't doing no overnight stuff. You ain't going to be no overnight success. You're going to be fully developed by the time you get there. So when you get there, you know how to handle it. When you get there, you won't lose it. When you get there, you can be a good steward. When you get there, you know how to multiply it. So God said, I'm not going to do it fast, but I am going to do it. Would you tell somebody, I said, the Lord is not lying concerning his word. God will do exactly what he said. Verse 16. God told Moses to lift up your rod in one hand and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. Wait a minute. Do you mean to tell me that Moses did all this wonderful stuff? He spoke to Pharaoh through the mouthpiece of Aaron. God heard his word. He did all this great things. And the only thing God is asking him to do is make a simple movement. Stretch. Ooh. Lord have mercy. You will not see the next move until you stretch. Let me say it again. You will not see the next move until you stretch. Well, as I get ready to go to my seat there, Elder Daniels, <laughs> as I open up this particular message with an analogy with track and field, I told you that Noah Lyles did not run away from his competition, but he simply outstretched his competition. And some of you have put a lot of ability in your speed and skills, but it still looks as if the enemy is right beside you. I mean the faster you run is like the faster he runs Lord help me in here uh, you don't hop from one church to the other and it seemed like the devil hopping right with you you don't change one job into another and it seemed like the hater hopping right with you you don't move from one city to another and it seemed like they hopping right with you you're out of one relationship into another and there's a demon hopping right with you it seemed like no matter what you do it's always beside you. You thought you'd have ran away from the pack only to look to your left and your right and it seemed like haters on one side and the devil's on the other and you're saying what good is it for me to keep running if I cannot outrun my adversary? What good is it to keep running if I cannot outrun my pain? What good is it to keep running if I cannot outrun my failure? Well I come to tell somebody in here whatever you do don't you stop running uh, tell your neighbor say don't you stop running as a matter of fact find a neighbor here high five a neighbor say neighbor whatever you do don't you stop running find somebody else in here and wake them up and say hey 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 whatever you do don't you stop running you sing man of God Bishop T.C. pastor what you mean don't stop running because it seems like the more I run the more problems I run into what you mean don't stop running the more I run the more enemies I find what you mean don't stop running the more I run the more devils I face well I got something for you God has given you a move that the enemy don't know anything about the finish line is on the way and so the more you run the closer you get I come to tell you that the problem you start with you don't have to finish with that the victim you were you don't have to continue to be is there anybody in here that believe that God has a greater plan for your life. Say yeah. Say yes. Say yeah. Even though you can't outrun the enemy, you can outrun your problems. One thing you can do is you can outstrip 
stretch your problem. Is there anybody in here that know that you have a stretching ability to get to where God has called you to be? I just need somebody stand to your feet and begin to stretch and let the devil know you thought you had me, but I got away. You thought I was crazy, but I got away. You thought I quit, but I got away. You thought I was a fool, but I got away. You thought I would stop, but I outstretched you. Say yeah, say yeah. Give God a praise. I outstretched. They could not run the Egyptians for they were on horses driving chariots. But God says, you don't have to outrun them. I just need you to out stretch them. Lord help me in here. It's not just in speed but it's also in God's wisdom. I need somebody to outstretch depression. Outstretch anxiety. Outstretch fear. Outstretch loneliness. Outstretch cancer. Outstretch diabetes. Outstretch the lie. Outstretch what happened to you. Say yeah. Say yeah. Woo. Some of you trying to run away. I don't need to run. I just need to stretch. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me here. Oh, my God. Because the enemy don't know that you got another move. See, the Egyptians were expecting somebody who was running. They weren't looking for somebody who was stretching. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> but you want to run across the finish line so you can throw both hands so it can look glorious. I'm at this point in my life. I don't care what the victory looks like. As long as I get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Moses stretched out his hand and the Red Sea divided. And the Israelites went over on dry ground because of a stretch. I'm here to tell you what's impossible is going to become possible when you stretch. I know it's a weekend and you got to work tomorrow. But how bad do you want it? You got to find your stretch. Huh, I know the church called a meeting on a Tuesday, but you, you got to run here and you run there. But, but do you have a stretch? Uh, because everybody's running upright. <laughs> Everybody's running on, on their time and on their schedules and, and when they can do it. But, but, but God said, I'm looking for the stretchers. Oh, I'm looking for the stretchers. That means when you stretch, it don't happen on your time. That's just Moses wasn't the only one who was stretching. But Jesus found himself. Yeah. He found himself at the point of transition on Golgotha's hill. We call it the hill called Calvary. Hallelujah to God. He was examined by Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate says, I find no fault in him. And the same one who was crying Hosanna in one season is now crying crucify him in another season. The Bible says that he became sin who knew no sin for us. And we know that the wages of sin is death. 
but the gift of God is eternal life. And when they took him after being beaten on the whipping post by the cat of nine tails, he took 39 lashes, bleeding, going into a hypovolemic shock. His body mutilated by the stones and the nails in the cat of nine tails. But yet he found the wherewithal to take the cross down the Via Della Rosa. And later on, with the assistance of, of, of Peter, he, he, he was able to make the journey up Golgotha's hill. And when he gets to Golgotha's hill, something happened there. They laid him on top of the old rugged cross. The cross was the meeting place of the relationship with God and with man and Jesus found himself in the joint Talk, I do reckon. it was painful for him to be in the joint but one thing that messed them up they should not have put him on the cross they should have just left him in prison they should have just beat him up and just put him in a cell but what messed them up was is they messed around and they put him on a cross they didn't just put him on the cross minister Teresa but they took one hand and stretched it to the left good God and they took the other hand and stretched it to the right what they didn't realize was Jesus didn't run fast but you just put him in the stretching position and so when the enemy tried to take the victory over mankind he looked at the cross and said uh oh I didn't see the stretch is there anybody in here that know that Jesus has stretched stretch for you so that you can be the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower, the righteousness of God. If you're excited about that, give God a praise. Jesus outstretched sin Whew, he outstretched death he outstretched the grave Lord have mercy go back and look at the tape uh, he died and it looked like death had won Matter of fact, death was taking a victory lap. It looked like hell had won. Hell was about to go on the medal stand. But they did not know. Three days later, they would get some footage that was not available at the time that the race concluded and they looked at the footage and they saw an empty grave and they said wait a minute we thought we had him but we couldn't hold him he was just too busy outstretching us death said we lost hell said we lost sin said we lost and now we got victory because of his stretch. Oh, Shatai Rokoshiana. And now that Jesus has shown us how to stretch, because Paul says we have a cross that we have to bear. So that means now walking this journey, you also have to stretch. Oh, Jesus. I'm closing, y'all. But what I want you to know, stand to your feet, is there's a remnant of individuals seemingly in every setting that outstretches the competition. It seemed like you're running neck and neck. There ain't no change, but again, the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but the one who stretches 
<laughs> at the end. Lord, it's, it's, it's not pretty, but it's fair. Because no allows one to go because it was his head that crossed the finish line first. Good Lord. And I've come to tell y'all, we got the victory because it was Jesus who's the head of the church. Who was the firstborn. He was the final Passover lamb. He's the high priest. He cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He's, he's the one who knows how to stretch. And last but not least, that when life thought it had you in the abyss of misery, that he reached down and stretched Ooh. he stretched to come get you Lord have mercy you thought you were done for but Jesus stretched you thought it was all over but he stretched the doctor said one thing but he stretched divorce was going to just tear your life but God stretched <laughs> being a single parent you thought you couldn't make it but he, he stretched and saw where you were <sighs> and his stretch gives you the ability and the mobility to stretch I know sometimes it's painful sometimes it's hurtful but don't lose your movement with God. Don't lose your movement with God.